Okay, this program is us to press T for takeoff. Let's see what pressing T does. Logo. So some of you have asked what my filming setup is like in this room. And since I am about to move out of this room anyways, I feel like I should show you around before I move. So normally when you're watching my vlog, you will see me sitting right here. And when I'm sitting here, I am being filmed by this camera on the tripod here. And as you can see, there's this very long mic line that comes all the way here with the uh, microphone. I still haven't gotten around to printing a uh, mount for the microphone, so I've still been holding it in my hand. But hopefully that will change very soon. None of those lights around my room are actually the lights that actually came with the room. These are my lights, my special lights, because I really need to have a good control of what the color of the light is in the videos and what the intensity is. So with those lights, I can quite easily have different presets for all kinds of situations. And now another thing is that I'd be sitting here recording myself and the camera would be all the way there. So it'd be pretty annoying if I have to like get off my chair and go and press the record button on the camera all the time. So the solution for that is that the camera actually has its own Wi-Fi network. And when I connect to that network with this iPad, I can actually control it from here and see what the camera is seeing. Like right now, I'm standing with my back facing the camera. In terms of the uh, post-processing workflow, usually what I just do is that I would get all the files, not into the computer. You never edit videos straight on the computer because your hard drive will fill up in half a second. So you should use one of these. As you can see, this is actually the seventh one of these I have. So that amounts to about 30 terabytes. So I'd bring my video into, into Final Cut and do all my editing here. Sometimes I uh, actually export the video to uh, Logic if I need to compose some like specific kind of music for the video. This screen over here, I sometimes have the viewer up here so that I can see the video on the bigger screen in greater detail. And this here is very important. It's monster, it keeps me going. And sometimes when I'm done with a video, I actually put it up onto this screen so that I have an idea of how it looks on a uh, big screen, but also more importantly, how it sounds. This subwoofer down here is pretty important because I need to know how much bass is in the video that I'm not actually hearing. This way, if somebody is playing it on a system with a low bass, I don't want to be blowing out their windows. And sometimes I make use of one of these things. You, you've seen this before. This is the stabilizer that I sometimes use when I go outside. Hey, guess what time it is? It's time to eat this ice cream sandwich. So I decided that I'm going to start printing some masks. So I found some files for the uh, 3D printed masks and I wanted to see which one of them fit my face. So I went ahead and 3D scanned my face and I found one that fits pretty well compared to the others. So I'm going to print it out and test it. So now it's printing and after it finishes, I'm going to try to put it on and see if I can improve it in some way. And it is done. Now let's just wait for the plate to cool down and then we can try it out. Okay, so let's see. This piece goes here on the inside and it snaps in like this. And now this other part should just clip right on like this. So I've gone ahead and put a uh, bit of filter inside this. So I guess this is how this thing should work. So this actually fits quite well, although I still feel some air gaps. In the future, I'm going to try to improve it somehow. So today, this little thing arrived in the mail and I've been playing around with it. And it's actually pretty fun. It's uh, quite useful, let's say. So while that is pretty fun and all, it's just a remote control app on the iPhone and like I'm just controlling it with a remote control app, that's boring. So I want to find a way to control that thing through the computer and maybe get it to do something a little bit smarter than just, you know, floating around in space. So in order to do that, I first need to figure out how this thing is communicating. So I want to know what kind of instructions is being given through what protocol. So I did some digging and I found out that 
The communication for this drone uses something called UDP, which is User Dataverm Protocol. It's a very simple protocol, much simpler than TCP, and it's good for transmitting short instructions. Now, it is actually quite simple to connect to this drone over Wi-Fi. I just need to connect to the Wi-Fi network and send an instruction through the port that's open. And the drone is actually designed to take instructions in the form of plain text. So all I need to do is send a uh, command like take off or land through uh, Python. But the issue with that is if I have to type out each command line, like go left 20 centimeters, I won't type it in time before it hits something. So I have to find a way to immediately send instructions to the drone via some kind of keystroke on the keyboard. Additionally, I want to ideally receive the video stream from the drone and be able to see it on the computer. Well, the lucky thing is that the drone also sends its video feed through UDP. I will receive the video stream and I will be able to display the video stream through this Python package called OpenCV. Now, it's actually not that difficult to write a program that sends commands to the drone. However, being able to control the drone and to view the video streaming from the drone at the same time is more difficult. So I went ahead and found a skeleton program that somebody else had written that uses Python game to display both the video stream and be able to control the drone. So let's try it out. Let's see what pressing T does. Okay, so it did take off. I don't know what I was expecting. So as you can see, this implementation of the program was successful in the sense that I was able to control the drone with using keystrokes, and we're also able to see a stream coming from the drone. But it's still kind of boring. So let's try something cooler. So the other day I was playing around with um, some computer vision techniques and I came across this thing called the Cascade Classifier. It's a type of algorithm that is good for facial detection. Now while I don't have the computational resources to train my own Cascade, I went and found a pre-trained Cascade and loaded it into my Python file. So as an exercise, I made a uh, little um, script that will use my webcam and will put a green frame around my face whenever my face is in the frame, like so. So I was wondering if I can Frankenstein this code into the drone code so that the drone is able to see where my face is. Let's do it. So in order to make my drone recognize faces, I spliced in this little piece of code that loads the cascade file, and then I went down to the part of the code that displays the stream from the drone, and I spliced in this block of code that will draw a rectangle where it recognizes a face. So now if I did everything right, when I run this code, I should be able to see a green box around my face from the drone stream. Let's try it. Okay, let's point the drone at my face and... Yep, there's the green circle. It works. It works. Okay, so obviously I can't get too close to it, otherwise it stops recognizing, but that's cool. So I guess the obvious next step is to get the drone to follow my face if I'm moving my face around, but I'm gonna do it some other time because I've done enough Python for today and I'm hungry.